Okay, welcome to everyone who is joining us now on YouTube. And I want to start by introducing you to this incredible group of uh, teachers that will be doing the course over the next few months. So first of all, I'd like to introduce Nigel. Hi, it'd be great to uh, have a chance to share with you. I think I'm on in that three weeks time. Looking forward to it. Really enjoyed the studies in preparation for it. And Steve. Hey everybody. I don't know if it's a bit strange of getting the former Eldrew in soon. Hey Eldrew. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm just basically working a lot in the background. I was also on the media side, but just looking forward to explore who God is first and foremost, but then out of that, who we are. So this can be exciting. Both Nigel and Steve are trustees of the ministry. And then Holly, the worship leader. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big step for Holly. And Cheryl and I are going to now explain the course to you. So um, Cheryl is uh, a, a, an amazing disciple and we're going to share our vision. So just say hello, Cheryl. Hello, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> We're probably going to have lots of fun with Cheryl. <laughs> so basically, this course has come about uh, after a series of uh, the journey we've been on over the last 18 months. And it really began for us when we began to ask the question, who are we? Who are we corporately? And who am I? And what we've realized so much in this process is that, especially when we've been Christians for a good while, that we end up being who other people expect us to be. And we take on board a lot of baggage and we can actually end up feeling very insecure and, and just that we're never quite good enough. And I think that is something that I perceive in the body of Christ all the time. And we have really just come back to God and said, okay, God, we're not going to be who everyone as a ministry wants us to be, but who do you want us to be? What is our calling? What is our gifting? What is the anointing? that you have put on us. And during this time of discovery, I think we've come into a sense of the greatest freedom that I've ever felt um, as a Christian. And really we want to share that with you. We want people to be comfortable in their own skin, to actually enjoy being who God made them to be. And ultimately, when we are confident in our own skin, we can be like Paul, who said we, he wanted to take hold of everything that Christ took hold of him for. And that's our great desire, is to see everyone take hold of the fullness. None of us want to get to glory one day. And, and Jesus to say to us, do you know what? I had all of this for you. And you were so busy trying to please everybody else. You were so busy trying to fit in and do what you felt others expected that you missed out on what I had for you. I think that would be incredibly heartbreaking. And so we believe that as we go through this course, it will be a voyage of discovery for us all to find out exactly what we are meant to be and how we can be that corporately with each other as well. I'm now going to hand over to Cheryl, who started this all off. So if you want to blame somebody, <laughs> Cheryl had this vision. And the moment she shared this vision with me, I just knew that I knew that this is the next step for us as a ministry. So over to you, Cheryl. I'm not sure I quite agree with that, but anyway, we're, we're, we're all going with it for the moment. Um, well, I, it's the mechanics of it, really, that um, I want to share with you this morning, because 
this is what when Jill says it started with me, it didn't, it started with Jill, but you know. Um, the mechanics of it came as one day of it. So I'm just going to um, explain what the sort of thing I saw. Because what we're doing at the moment, so between now and Christmas, is like the core module. It's the central thing. So if you imagine you've got a big circle stuck in the middle of your page. This is the centre of all things, really, for this course. So you've got who I am, and therefore, who am I? Which is your central thing. This is what I want to encourage all of you, especially you Zoomers, that when we're going through this, this is not just about a teaching module. All right? It's not about another load of information that we can get about who God is. Because actually, I think, to be honest, most of us have got a fair idea who we think God is. That we wouldn't have come this far. And we can only understand who God is by the fact that God reveals to us who he is. Otherwise, he's a mystery. But thank you, God, for uh, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit reveals to us who the Father is, who Jesus is, and therefore something of who he is. But in the central core of the teaching that's going on with this module here, I want to encourage you that this is not just about knowing who God is in our head. It's not just about, well, I know him about this and I know him about that. And this is about knowing him. So this is by experience. I knew who God was my father because I read it in the Bible. It all made sense to me because the Holy Spirit inside of me was going, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I actually knew him as my father when he took care of me. Then situations happened and he fathered me and he taught me to it. I met the father. So this central core, it's not, as I said, about the head knowledge, it's about knowing. And therefore we're going to have to engage with it. Now this is all of us. This is your lovely Zoom family. I'm sorry you're all, all but you know, my lovely Zoom family and all of us here on team. But get hold of what is being taught, get hold of what um, is being said by whoever it is and take it home yourself. You know, get out that uh, lovely dusty Bible that has been sitting there and another version that we haven't read for years and years and years and see what else it's saying. Really go through it. Like really have um, an encounter ourselves with who God is so that we get that deeper understanding and revelation. Let the Holy Spirit teach you by experience in your life so that as we go through the next season, whatever good or trials, when it comes up, we're actually putting into practice what we know, not just because it's an exercise, but because we're engaging with Holy Spirit, with Father and with Jesus. So that's the core of this module. Secondly, um, and after Christmas, what will come out of that is, is something like, um, if you imagine sort of five bubbles, this is the sort of thing I saw. So you've got the fivefold ministry of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor and teacher. Now I know there are many, many giftings and I know we've done quite a bit of teaching in the past on giftings. This is more than that. These, these modules that are going to come out for Christmas are all going to come out of who we now see we are individually. So not just who we are as um, Christians and adopted sons, but who God has made me in the core of who I am. What makes me tick? And what comes out of that? And we're going to have some little groups of people that are going to come and help us walk through it. So we've got an apostolic group, we've got a prophetic group, we've got an evangelistic group, a pastoral group, and a teaching group that are going to be able to take those high-fold ministries and really bring to us how that ticks and how it works for us individually. Because although we've got loads and loads of giftings, there's a core gifting. The stomach, like I said, it's what makes us function. Whenever I do anything that God's asking me to do, the prophetic will come through it somehow. It's the core of who I am. The teacher will pop out somewhere. You know, and I'm having coffee and chatting to a friend. All of a sudden, teacher mode kicks in. And, you know, it can be quite annoying, but it can be also a blessing. So we're going to have a look at how these things function and work with people from the team here who are a real blessing in their anointing. They've been doing it for years, 
eat your dinner, be nice, it'll be good for years. And they've got a real anointing on their life, and they're going to go and walk to us, uh, with us, how all these things function and work. And then on the top, like the hands that hold everything up together, we've got some really good intercessors that are praying for the ministry, that are really engaging with God. So it's, the whole thing is backed up with intercessory prayer. We've also got a um, prayer team um, called Into Freedom. But they will be able to you be able to access them if you we would like some one-to-one -one prayer ministry. They are going to be available. We're going to have a pastoral team because, as you all know, when we start really engaging with God, God starts engaging with us, and all sorts of interesting things can start happening in our life. But we may be completely new and I don't know how to cope with this. And if you'd like someone to walk with you to it, if you'd like. Someone you can get, you know, a phone call with, someone that you just like to bounce some things off with. We've got a pastoral team that are very anointed pastorally, and you can get hold of them, and they will be able to engage with you. So you get hold of extra, you want extra, so this is sort of extra, I don't know what the word is, but the property, I suppose. Um, extra, um, rather than just a teaching on its own, you can get hold of us at Agni at call to prayer at .co.uk now admin at call to prayer .co.uk and then you will be put in touch with somebody who's relevant to going what it is you're requesting so you can send your email in and your email address will be passed on to a member team here who will get in touch with you and help you so i'm hoping that this is a whole sort of generic module it's more than just a teaching there's far more to it. So it's going to be very interesting to see where it goes. I have no idea yet where it's going to end up, but we know where we're starting. Isn't that right, God? If you give us the end pattern and you can tell us where to start, but then off we go and the adventure begins. And I'd like to say to all you lovely Zoom family on the wall here, I'm really looking forward to having the adventure walk with you. It's going to be great that we walk through all these things together and let's see what God does and where he goes. And for those of you joining us on YouTube, I'm hoping that you're going to get blessed and God will really download to you something that you really found helpful. And together as a family here at Call to Prayer, we really welcome you. So I'm going to hand back to Jill now. And she's got the exciting stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cheryl. Uh, we just really want this to be a, a time where those that tune in, whether it's YouTube or Zoom or uh, the, the, the members of the team that are allowed to gather in our place of, of work, um, we want this to actually be a time of release. That it's not just going to be hearers of the word, but real doers of the word as well that we take hold of the fullness of Jesus and that we bear the fruit that he has for us, fruit that will last. Because I know that, um, I don't know who's obviously listening in on YouTube, but I know our Zoom family, I know that God has got amazing things for you still um, to do for him and you're incredible people. And, you know, I think together, we're on this journey very much together. So I just want to re-emphasize what our plan is. Um, this one obviously is a little bit of an introduction one. I will do a little bit of teaching now, but um, on Thursday generally, we're going to do the bulk of the teaching, followed by a bit of prayer ministry that will gather as we go through, and that will be out on YouTube as well. And then the discipleship side of it obviously would have to, to just be uh, limited for those on Zoom. But we, as Cheryl said, I want to emphasize that there is a whole prayer support going on here and it is a one-to-one, -one. we will do it COVID safety, um, uh, regulations are taken into account, but there will be a team that can minister to people, that can help them to be free of things that they have carried for years. And I, I believe that 
part of that is wrong expectations of ourselves and wrong expectations that others have put on us and just to find that place of contentment that is so much on our heart right now the other thing to mention as a ministry we are very keen on the hebrew roots of our faith and of course this season is the season of the autumn feasts um, our jewish friends are uh, celebrating their their most holy days at the moment their new year and so on and I just want to mention that normally we would be doing in-depth teaching on this, but obviously this year is a little bit different. We, we normally have a, a celebration here uh, over this time. Um, but we do have some teaching on it available on our website if you want to have a look, where I go into a lot of detail of how Jesus fulfills the seven feasts of the Lord. So if you want that, it is online. So now we're going to just go into a little bit more of a teaching um, session, but tomorrow we will continue that and go a little bit deeper um, into what comes out of today. So the two very much go together. So hopefully you'll catch up one way or another with tomorrow's teaching as well. So Heavenly Father, we just ask you to come and anoint now. As I bring a word, Lord, may this be a fresh word, may it just expand our thinking as we begin to look how great is our amazing and wonderful God. Amen. Amen. You know, our Bibles start off in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. And that those words are so powerful. In the very beginning was God. God is the beginning. God is the end. God always was, always is, and always will be. And the problem is with us as, as humans, we have um, a very small picture of this amazing God. I don't care how long we've walked with him, it's still too small. We, one day when we get to glory, we will realize that we've had a thimble full of understanding of who God is. Because he's so much bigger than any of us can ever imagine. Because our minds are finite, that he is not. He is just so huge, so big, so enormous, so majestic, so wonderful, so incredible, that we would never be able to understand that in our human form. And I believe it will take the whole of eternity to get a glimpse and we still won't understand him because his ways are not our ways his thoughts are not our thoughts they are higher much much higher much bigger than we could ever ever imagine and in order to start this course i just want us to if you like just let our minds go in a direction that maybe they have never gone before and just think about how big is our God. God made mankind in his image and what we tend to do is shove God into our image, into how we perceive him and not as he really is. So, you know, let's, let's allow Holy Spirit to come today and just move our mindsets to embrace this in the vastness of God, if we can possibly ever do that, which I doubt. But let's just try and allow him to stretch us a bit today. You see, God always was. Everything else has a starting point except for God. So in the beginning of the very beginning, where there was no beginning because it always was, this is where my words get incredibly difficult because our language doesn't cover it, but I'm going to call it eternity past because there is no other way of referring to this. 
because God always was. But there was obviously just God, God the Father, God the Son, and God Holy Spirit. And the three were completing themselves. They fellowshiped perfectly together. They loved perfectly together. They were all that was, was God. Because that was all that needed to be, was God. And I don't know why, but God decided between himself and Jesus and the Holy Spirit that one day that they were going to bring forth a creation. And God began that creation, as far as we know, with heavenly realms. So even the heavenly realms came after God. God was there before the heavenly realms, but he decided to create these heavenly realms, this incredible spirit realm. And the spirit realm is always the one that is far greater than any physical realm. I believe the spirit realm is because God is spirit, that the spirit realm is the greater reality. And what we have here is just, if you like, a, a shadow of that greater, incredible realm of God. Now, we are going to be blown away. We are going to be totally blown away when we see that realm one day. Because it is going to be something literally out of this world. Totally out of this world. And it is going to be good. You see, the very heart of God, the very nature of God, has to be expressed through everything he touches. So God is good. God is love. So everything comes out of that goodness. Everything comes out of that love. You know, I love this Psalm 19. And there was a point, you see, where God had made the spiritual realm. He'd made the angels. He'd made the archangels. He made the seraphim and the cherubim and the living creatures. And goodness knows how many different types of living creatures there are. There could be thousands of different types. We just have a record of some of them. But our God could have done anything. Who knows? Who knows what is happening in that spirit realm? It is huge. It is unbelievable. It's got no dimensions because God has got no dimensions. There's no limits because he is limitless. So we've just got to let our imaginations run wild at this point because that spirit realm, that heavenly realm, God brought into existence, but they all had a starting point. Only God never had a starting point. Everything else in the heavenly realms had a beginning. They are eternal, but they did not necessarily live in eternity past. However, the heavenly realms were there before the physical realm, before the earthly realm. And, you know, I love to use my imagination because this is the point where you have to use your imagination. And I just love the, the fact that when God decided to make physical, that the angels and all the living creatures gathered round and they probably were saying to themselves and each other, what? is he doing what is he going to bring forth they had never seen physical they're spiritual but the spiritual don't forget is more of a reality than the physical so everything that god brought forth in the physical realm is truly a shadow of what is in the spiritual realm to get just a little glimpse of this, just the weeniest glimpse of this, just go and stand outside on a starry night and look up and look at the amazing 
sky full of these little twinkling lights. And we honestly see so few. And some of you who are listening, maybe in big cities, probably see far less than we do here in Norfolk. But you know, when we look up, each little star is a sun of its own. Each little star twinkling, it, 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 it tells a story great, bigger than, than the, just that twinkle, twinkle little star. I love to look up, I think of Abraham every time I look at the night sky and I think God told him to look up and count the stars and of course he couldn't. Well, maybe he tried. But do you know what? This is just something I, I, I was hearing the other day that if we, just in our little milky way, which is just a small bit of the whole of the discovered universe that's out there, that if you, there are billions and billions of stars and if you tried to count them all, one a second, it would take you about 2,500 years just to count the stars in our milky way. Does this give us a bit of an indication of how big God is? That, that, you know, he is enormous and we are discovering more and more in space all the time. And this is only the physical realm. This isn't the spiritual realm. The physical realm is mind-blowing. I don't know much about ast uh, astronomy, but my goodness me, what a fascinating subject. And they say that it continues to expand. But you see, I love what Louis Gigolo says, that, you know, looking up at all of that, if that was for all, just for us, it would be completely oversized. But it's not. It is to reflect the glory of God. It's to reflect how big is our God. And when we put it in that perspective, the universe suddenly seems small. Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Isn't that powerful? The heavens declare his glory. That is what it's all about, is his glory. And the heavens, as we look up, just think of the glory of God, because that's what is all about. The glory points to him. Isaiah 40, 25, let me just read this one to you. This is God speaking. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. We might not have a clue how many there are, but God knows every single one. And it's because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. And I feel when God spoke that word, when God spoke out the word of creation, let there be, that that word was so powerful, it went on and on and on creating. And you see that word, that's why the universe is expanding today, because the word has not stopped creating. When that word came out of the mouth of God, it was the, it, the power behind that word just resonated and brought time and space into being. 
God just spoke. And the word of God is so powerful. Now in the Hebrew, there is a fourth word. In the beginning, God. We know that so often, but there's a word that's not translated in your Bible, and it's called et. It is the olive and the tarp, and it has no real meaning, so it's kind of impossible for translators to translate it. It's an emphasis. The fourth word, the et, the olive and the tarp, and Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, which is the Greek for olive and tar. I am the beginning and the end. I am this fourth word. And I believe when John came to write his gospel, how could he possibly describe Jesus? He said, in the beginning was the word. I believe he was referring to this fourth word, that the one through whom all creation came about, he is the one that I've met, he is the one I walk with, he is the one whose chest I put my head. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of man. Before God brought about much of the physical creation, even before the sun and the moons, he said, let there be light because the other lights came about on the fourth day, but there, right at the beginning, God said, let there be light. You see, light is him. It's who he is. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So right at the beginning, God called forth himself into creation to be the light of the world. So everything that we read in scripture, every part of the physical story of mankind is a pointer, is a foreshadow, is a representation of who God is. On the third day, he brought forth a little seed, just a little seed. And from that seed, he brought forth vegetation. And for you gardeners, you know the importance of planting seeds. When you plant a seed in the soil and you water it and tend to it, hopefully it will grow into whatever that seed. Within that seed is contained the DNA needed. So a seed could be as a mustard seed that grows into a great big mustard tree, or it could be an acorn seed that grows into a great oak tree. Within that seed is all that is needed to produce the end result. So even in the seed was a picture of Jesus, whom Jesus said, unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, it will remain on its own. But within that seed was the DNA for us to join with him. And we'll be looking at that as we go through these things in greater detail. The word God uses for create in the beginning is the word bara, B-A-R-A. And that word is a word that means create from nothing. Now we have a lot of scientists bringing forth all sorts of things at the moment. But the one thing they cannot ever do is bring something out of nothing. But when God made the heavens and earth, that word bara 
he brought it forth from nothing. And you know, I don't ever worry about scientists proving this, that, and whatever they want to prove. Because at the end of the day, there is nothing that I have ever heard that will convince me that there's no God. There's nothing, because nothing comes from nothing. So you need something who can bring something out of nothing to have started the whole process of, and there's only one who can do that, and that's our God. He is the creator, and he never had a beginning, and they're all trying to find when, when, when was the beginning. They can argue, they can carry on wasting their time. I'd rather pick up the Bible and know from God's perspective, in the beginning, God. And that's why we can trust this word. And, and you know, that I, I just love it too when they talk about the Big Bang. You see, the thing is, that's not really a problem because can you imagine that thundering voice of God is so very powerful that I should imagine the biggest bang that we've ever heard in the world couldn't compete with the sound of that roar that came out of him. Let there be. And it all came in to be. The interesting thing is too, um, let there be is Y-E-H-I. And there was, you know when we hear, let there be, and then little refrain, and there was, is W-A-Y-H-I. And when you put those two words together, you get the basis of Yahweh. You get the basis of Yahweh. Let there be, and there was. And of course, Yahweh means I am. I am. Let there be because he is. I love the way that this incredible book of ours is so detailed. It has so many layers. You couldn't make this up if you tried because it would be impossible. Our human minds just don't go there. It would be absolutely totally impossible because there's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer and that's why we can trust the word of God that's why we know that what he says in this book is the truth and that's what we've got to start with before we can discover who we are we have to allow him to show us who he is and we're going to see this as we go through. Much, much deeper, we're going to go layer by layer. So that by the end of this first part of the course, hopefully we will have the certainty of knowing that we stand on such amazing ground because we stand on who he is. And God knew, even in this early days, he is the beginning and the end. And he knows exactly, before he even started creation, exactly what was going to happen. Before he began, it was finished, if you know right? Because he is the beginning and the end. And that's something that our minds that are so locked into time and space find difficult to comprehend. But if we under begin to allow ourselves to realize that God is completely and utterly out of time, he's not restricted by time. Therefore, he is the great I am at any given time. So if God chooses to go to what we call the end of the story, 
He is there as well as at the beginning, at the same time. Now that's something that we cannot get our head around because we are locked into this. But God isn't locked into anything. And so, you know, as we go through this, I'm going to bring out much more emphasis on this as we go through. That is why there was a lamb that was slain before creation. And that lamb already took away the sins of the world. And if we start to see these things put in place, then we realize that's why Jesus could be the resurrection and the life. He always is those things. He wasn't just the resurrection after the cross. He's always been resurrection life. You were chosen before he even made you. That blows my mind. He chose you before you were a little spark in mum and dad's thinking or a night of passion or whatever it was that brought you into being. Before that happened, he knew you. He knew you. And right at the very beginning, he destined that there would be a book that was called the Book of Life. And your name was written in that book before anything else. How did God do that? Because God went to the end and he saw you worshipping him in glory, that you'd made it, that you hadn't turned away from him, that you were there, round the throne, worshipping with the angels. And he went to the beginning and he put your name. So this whole argument about predestined and free will, it's both. It's both. Because he gave you free will, but he went to the end to see what you chose, went back to the beginning and predestined you to fulfill it. <laughs> I hope I've, I've made you think, and if I've made you think, then that's great. You know, that's what I want to do. As always, with everything that we teach here, we always say, please test it. If things don't seem right to you, doesn't matter. You know, allow God to speak to you. And my greatest wish in any teaching is that things will start sparking in you. And you will think, ah, oh, that, ah, oh, that. And you will get revelation as we go through. That to me is the greatest joy of opening up scripture. So I really hope that for you. Amen. I'm going to just lead us in a time of prayer ministry now, um, because I want us, even if you're on YouTube, let's just have this moment. And I'm just going to lead you in a few moments of prayer, just to allow God to soak this in into your hearts. So Father, we, we just come before you right now. And Father God, we recognize that each and every one of us will have made you far too small. And we ask you, Lord, to forgive us for doing that. And wherever we have put you into an image of ourselves, portrayed ourselves and decided who you are and what you are when you're actually so much bigger and so much better and so much faster than anything we could ever imagine. And Lord, we know in your word it says that our minds need to be renewed. And so, God, we come before you humbly today and say, Lord, will you just change our minds, expand our minds, that we no longer put you into our own box, 
but we allow you to blow that box open. And for us to really understand that nothing but nothing but nothing is impossible for our God. Because you are the God who has no limits. And it's us who need to change. It's us who need to allow you to work on us. And Lord, as we stand before you today, as we come before you today, renew our thinking, Lord. Get rid of our mindsets that have locked you into something that you're not. And Lord, prepare our hearts as we go through this time together that we will allow you to change us more and more into your likeness with ever increasing glory. So Father God, today we just bring ourselves, we offer ourselves before you. And we allow you, Holy Spirit, to work in our hearts and in our lives. And Father, I pray that you will give each and every one of us a greater revelation of how mighty, how majestic, how awesome, how great, how vast, how absolutely incredible is our God. And we ask this in the precious mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh.